Copyright 2019 of Myra Dawn. All rights reserved. All rights reserved under the International and Pan American Copyright Conventions. No part of this book may be reproduced or transmitted in any form or by any means, electronic or mechanical, including photocopying, recording or by any information storage and retrieval system, without permission in writing from the author. This is a work of fiction. Names, places, characters, and incidents are either a product of the author's imagination or are used fictitiously, and a resemblance to any actual persons, living or dead, organizations, events, or locales is entirely coincidental. Warning, the unauthorized reproduction or distribution of this copyrighted work is illegal. Criminal copyright infringement, including infringement without monetary gain, is investigated by the FBI and is punishable by five years in prison and a fine of $250,000. Cover Art by Myra Dawn Chapter 1. Sky Sky knelt on the ground, churning the dirt and shoveling some of the dark soft soil out of her way. One by one, she set the seedlings she had started in the house into the holes she had made, patting the dirt down around them. Beside her sat the row cover Dylan had made, a lightweight plastic frame to protect the winter vegetables. With care, and if the weather held out, in a few weeks, they would have fresh kale, broccoli, carrots, and beets for the dinner table. After finishing the row, Skye sat back on her heels, wincing as she did so. Though her body protested today's work, the gunshot wound had been healing well. She took a breath, letting out a happy sigh at her progress, then lifted her face to let the sun warm it. The weather had been rainy and cool for a while now. The bright day was a nice change. A smile lit upon her lips as she looked over the property. Since planning their future together, there had been some changes. She and Dylan had decided an expansion of the cabin was crucial. One bedroom for her and Dylan, one of equal size for Wade and a slightly smaller one for Jesse. The building work was progressing nicely with the help of a few neighbors. The frame was up, and now the men worked at it around their chores. It would be done in no time. What would her life be like now if there'd been no AG flu? She'd like to think she would have done more than just notice Dylan on the streets of Colton or that he would have approached her. That somehow, they would have been able to merge her work with his love of this mountain. But the odds of any of that working out in the old world would have been small. In that world, they had been like two sides of the same coin, never designed to be face to face. But in this after-pandemic world, they complemented one another and stood together to face the challenges it brought even when those challenges were right down the mountain. She glanced toward Colton. It's where Calvin, Tony and Pete were being held until their trial. She shook her head. No need to worry about that now. The trial would come soon enough. Skye scanned the tree line, searching for both Dylan and Jesse. Dylan, because he wouldn't be happy seeing her outside. And Jesse because he was due back from hanging out with Kelsey and Bree. Jesse had turned 13 this month and felt fully capable of making his way from one cabin to another on the mountain. Even though a watch had been set up for both infected and any strangers who might roam through, her son's newfound freedom made her nervous. There were dangers on this mountain. She'd already held her breath for weeks after the battle in town, worried Jesse would come down with the ag flu, but when he hadn't gotten so much as a sniffle, her concern lessened. He seemed to be one of those with natural immunity. Remembering her bout with the sickness, Skye's stomach turned. She was glad Jesse hadn't gone through that. In a hurry to be on his way this morning, Jesse had squirmed out of her goodbye hug. But not before she noticed what regular meals were doing for him. Though still short for his age, his once bony frame was finally gaining muscle. Skye chuckled as she remembered his reaction when she asked when Jesse would be home from playing. He had almost choked on his breakfast. Mom. We ain't children. We don't play. We hang out, he said as he laid his head in his hand. Apparently, she had made one of the greatest social blunders a parent could make. Her heart warmed. She loved these little interplays, part of a normal life, with healthy interactions. It meant the world she was able to give it to him. A rustling in the brush caught Skye's attention. 
The tall grasses parted, and Dylan stepped through. Across his broad shoulders, he carried a good-sized deer. Wade appeared, seemingly out of thin air, from behind the house and congratulated his brother. Dylan said something and nodded Skye's way. Wade turned and shrugged. Oh man, Skye mumbled to herself. I'm caught. She sometimes thought that if Dylan had his way, she wouldn't be allowed outside the house. Wade took the deer from his brother and walked toward the gambrel to hang it up. Dylan headed straight toward her. He planted his feet and towered over her as she crouched by the garden. I remember telling you to stay in the house. Um, I believe I heard, and I quote, I reckon you might want to stay in the house today. And well, I didn't want to. Dylan scoffed, woman, I swear. Stop trying to intimidate me. Come here and help me. I only have a couple more then I'll go in. You're the bossiest woman I know. Dylan crouched beside her. Well, we're a good match then because you are the bossiest man I know. Skye smiled sweetly at him and kissed him on the cheek. Ain't none of my tricks work on you. How am I supposed to get you to listen? He ran his hand over her hair. Your intimidation tricks. They actually work better than you think, especially when you are worked up. When you're angry, you are one scary-looking dude. But you don't need that with me. You just need to love me, that's all. Sky placed one of the delicate plants in his large, calloused hands. Dylan chuckled. Just love ya? You gonna heal on love? I'm fine. I needed some air and don't tell me you wouldn't have done the same thing. And before you say I couldn't have defended myself, Wade was out here. So, see? Protected. Dylan barely contained his laughter. You didn't even know he was out here. You think I didn't see your surprised face when he came walking around the corner? Just set the baby plant. Skye waved her hand from him to the hole in the ground and rolled her eyes. How did he manage to see literally everything? She ignored his knowing look as he gently laid the seedling in its new place. After layering the dirt on it, Dylan stood and put the row cover over the new plants, then he held a hand out to Skye. Come on darling. Skye brushed her hands together, knocking off the dirt clinging to them. Grasping Dylan's fingers, she stood on shaky legs. She was happy for his assistance. Once standing, she put an arm around Dylan. He returned the embrace, being careful of her wound. The two slowly made their way toward the cabin just as Jesse emerged from the woods. The boy ran to them, eager to discuss his day. When they reached the front door, they waved Wade over. It was evening now. Time for the family to come together and grow tighter bonds. Struggles awaited them, and they needed to be ready.